Today I'm gonna tell you how to install Arch Linux and first I'm gonna tell you about how to get the installation images so you can go over here to the Arch Linux wiki and then go to downloads then you'll get a bunch of options though you'll get a BitTorrent download if you want if you like know the ways of BitTorrent and know the ways of torrenting use use BitTorrent but for this video I'm gonna be using I am going to be using the mirrors although I'm gonna go over all of these so netboot is going over the network you'll you can see more right here I'll show you later vagrant images if you know like what vagrant images are then maybe you can use them docker images so like if you have docker you can run our Linux. Virtual machine images. Well, you don't need you don't need to run virtual machine images to, if you want to run it in like any virtualization software. For me, I just use the mail for everything. For the HTTP direct downloads. It's under here. So you can pick your preferred download from any of these mail websites. Wherever you want them. And then depending on your thing, you can verify. You can verify all the you can verify your ISO image. Now, this, now I'm gonna go talk a bit about netboot. So netboot images like a small on the fly, but you need Ethernet and enough memory to start running. Can get all these over here. Okay, so back to it. You, you, we are splitting two ways. So first, so first, if you want to run it on real hardware, you could use Rufus or Belinda Etcher. They are both good things, but I prefer Rufus. So you can download whatever version you want over here. And then if you want to use Belinda Etcher because Rufus is not working or you just don't have Windows, you like have like Mac or Linux. Then you can use Bolina Etcher, which is easier, but I don't have good experiences with it. With them. So just download Etcher and keep on going. So now, so now. If, if you, I'm going to go show you the Rufus way and the other ways. So, you could, okay. So, Rufus, 
Once you open Rufus, you plug in your USB device, it'll say here. Then, then for the boot selection, click select and open your Arch Linux. Open your Arch Linux ISO. Then, like, keep them all as normal. And if you want, then ch if you want to, change the volume label. And then click start. If you should, it should take 15 minutes or so, like something close to that. It should take a little bit of time. Now for Belinda Etcher, it's actually Belinda Etcher is not portable. So you have to go through the installer. I already have it installed on my computer. Right here. So what Bel so if we boot up Belinda Etcher, you add your file, which is your Arch Linux open. And then you select your target. And then you select your USB drive, then click flash. This one's a little easier, but still bad experiences. Now the other way is with VirtualBox. So what you gotta do is you gotta click new, enter the name, into the name. For example, I used Arch for video. Put whatever folder you want. Put like whatever folder you want to keep your VM in. Then continue. Select the ISO image. For example, Arch Linux. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah, now it recognizes it. Use Arch. Then, it's auto-recognizes it. So one thing you, more you have to do is you have to go to hardware and enable EFI. Also, for the if you for the hard disk, you can uh, customize these to your liking. Also, if you want to increase the processors or the base memory, you can do that here too. Once you uh, finish all the things you ha need to do, what you have to do is click finish. Although I already have one for you, I already have one for you guys. So let's start. Let's start it up. Now, if you're on a real computer, then you have to spam the boot key. Okay guys, so it should, it should be looking like this. You should be getting a lot of okays. While I'm doing this, I'll... Oh, I can't move it. Okay guys, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go move it real quick to my other drive. Because that's a step I forgot, and I'll and I'll see you in this video. All right, guys. So once you finish, once you boot into your your arch, what you have to do. Is if you want, if you like want, want to change like your keyboard layout, what you can, what you can do, and of course this is a little hard. 
this is a little hard, so I'm going to be showing the installation guide process. Also, you, you have to disable secure boot. If you, if you are using a real computer. So the default console key map is like the US. So you get like a US keyboard at first. Test your keyboard real quick. Because we will be using this. Then, then you can type in locale CTL load key maps. Oh, yeah, list key maps. You will see a lot of key maps. Once you find the one you want, once you find the one you want, you type in load keys. Yeah, you, you type in load keys and then the key map you want. I'm not going to be changing mine though. So like, I'm just gonna pause this for a second, exit, and then come. All right, guys. So to leave it, you just have to click Q. Silly me. I know. But now, if you want to clear, you can either just type in clear, or you can just click Control and L. That clears it also. For the next step, for the next step, you you might want to be able to set the fonts. So, like, if you want to set a font, you can cl click set font. You can type in set font, and then whatever font you want whatever font oh yeah so so you you have to so you can check this path by i think ls and then the path really hot really hard usr share kbd console fonts Although I won't be doing it in this part. Now. Now. Type in cat. Now what you want to do. Is you want to type in cat. That's this. From where. I just made a typo. Slash EFI slash FW platform size. If it returns sixty four, then you have sixty, then it's a new EFI. And there's a 64 bit UAFI. But if it returns 32, you, well, you, it is in UAFI mode, but you have a 32 bit UAFI. Which means you're only, which means you're two, 
bootloader choices is eat are uh, either system D or GVUP. But if the file does not exist, the if the file does not exist and it just spits out nothing, it can be booted in BIOS or CSM mode. But if the system did not boot in the mode you desired, refer to your motherboard's manual. Seven, connect to the internet. So, type in IP link and check if your if your if your network interface is enabled. Then, then if you're using white for wireless networks and W W and W N. Make sure the card isn't blocked with RF kill. So if you type in RF kill right here, you will see your devices. Well, although I'm using a VM, it doesn't work for me. And then, if your fit network is blocked, so like, if you see, if you see your stat. If you see a card is hard blocked, use a hardware button. But if the card is soft blocked, use RF kill. RF kill. Unblock. WLAN. I'm gonna go back over here. So now, to connect to the cable, if you have Ethernet, just plug in the cable. If you have Wi Fi, use IWCPL. And you're in here. No. Now you can list the devices by using device list. List device. I mean device list. You would see your devices and if the device is powered off, turn it on while using device and then put in the name, set property, powered on. Or if you're using an adapter, type in adapter, adapter, type in adapter. And write the name of the adapter, set property, powered on. Then, if you want to initiate a scan, you can use station. Any of the names. Scan. Then, then, now, what you want to do is, if you, 
Then you list all the available networks by using station. The name of your device. Get networks. It will give you the networks. Then if you want to connect to a network, use stay in the name of the network connect and your Wi-Fi password oh then you type in your SSID But if it has a password, which it obviously does, use IWCTL. That if it asks you for a password, use IWCTL dash dash passphrase. The password, station, the name of the your Wi-Fi, connect the SSID. And then to and then if you want to check you want to ch check if your internet is connected I'm just gonna exit by typing in exit you want to type in ping and then any website for this example I'll use google.com it you should be getting 64 bytes if you're getting 64 bytes, just press Control C. Now I'm gonna clear it by pressing Control L and get to the next thing. So to update the clock, use time A C T L. Press enter. If it gives you the correct time, well, once you connect to the internet, it should give you the correct time right here. But it didn't synchronize mine, probably because it's in a VM. But it will synchronize yours. Now it's time to partition the disks. So you see F disk over here. Actually, all you have to do is. But there's a better tool called CF disk. It's easier. So now you have to select your label type. Most likely option would be GPT. Now you'll be over here. It just see free space. Click on you, and then give it 100 megabytes. 100 capital M. Press enter. Now go down with the down arrow and click enter on you, and then set this to four gigs with the capital G. This will be a swap partition. This DevSD one is our BIOS, SDA two is our swap, and Dev SDA three will be our actual like hard disk if we're trying to use stuff. So just click enter and then enter again because that's how much you have left. And now go and move your keyboard go use the left and right arrows to move to right click enter type in yes 
click enter. So once you, so once you click enter, it has been altered. Now in the press quit, press enter. And now I'm going to clear it out again. So now we finish partitioning the disks and we're about to get to the fun part. Installing. Now, I would recommend, I would recommend watching this guy's, I would recommend watching this guy's video, I'm gonna load it up real quick. And this guy's video, Arch Linux, a comfy install guide. So if you need a little bit more help, you could be, you could be using his if this video didn't go in depth enough. So, space, and then dev, sda3. So what you want to do is do mkfs.ext for slash dev dash slash sda3. Click enter. Formatted. Let me go back to here. Oh, that was my thing. Now you want to do mkfs. No, not mkfs. You want to do mk swap. Dev SDA2 because that's a swap partition. A swap partition is basically like if you're running a program, it takes too much memory, and you don't want Arch Linux to freeze, don't you? Instead, you it will take extra space from this partition. Now for the third one. You type in f m k f s dot fat. Oh, m k f s, not k f s. Dash capital F thirty two. Dev slash dev. I'll be doing slash. SDA one because that's a boot partition or EFI partition. So we've done this now. Now we have to mount the file system. So what you want to do is type in mount slash dev and then your root partition the one you use for the nkfs.ext file so mine would be sda3 and then type in slash mnt Should uh run nothing out. Now 
what you gotta do is you gotta type in mount that's that's mkd dev dev and then your boot partition mine will be sda1 and then just press enter oh no don't put enter yet dev sda1 to m n to slash m n t slash boot so now we've made it now we created a swap volume in dev sda2 so what you want to do is type in swap on and then dev and your swap partition which would be sda2 for me now a very useful tool will be lsblk Over here, you see SDA1 is in boot, SDA2 is swap, and SDA3 is MNT. I'm going to go check with that YouTube video. Be right back. I'm not that skilled, but I do know how to. So, actually, guys, I got a little wrong. You have... You have to type in dash E F I and then mount it this. So now if we type in L S B L K I will unmount dev SDA one with MNT boot. So now it should be working. Yeah. So I'm just gonna remount. SDA1 one more time, LSBLK, and yay, everything's back to normal. Sorry for the inconvenience, guys. And girls. So, what so you can select the mirrors i will be uh skipping this i will be skipping this part but if you want to you can go to wiki.autolinux.org slash title slash installation guide and continue on so to 2.2 install essential packages so what you gotta do is you I'm going to is you have to type in pack your app that's capital K 
then type in dash mnt slash mnt base linux linux firmware sof firmware for sound cards base Devil If I boot MVR Nano Network ma Network Manager and I'm going to go check for any more essential packages. Okay, so one more thing you have to add is the, your bootloader of your choice. My most recommended one is GNU Grub, so I'll just type in Grub. And then just click enter. Press enter. And it's going to start installing. I'll see you when it's done. Because this does take some time for me. Alright guys. So we have. We have installed. Our Arch Linux. I'm just going to clear. And now. We have to configure the system. What we have to do is type in gen fstab. Dash u. Dash capital U. Dash m n slash m n t. So let's check this out. Right here. Okay, so these three things should be correct. Dev SDA three is our root, Dev SDA one is our boot, and Dev SDA two is our swap. Now we're gonna press like we're gonna press the up button on the keyboard to re recall the previous command. Then make two greater than two, two less than symbols but two greater than symbols dash mnt i mean slash mnt slash etc slash fs tab then just press it hit enter Now, a very cool feature that you should learn if you want to know Linux is cat. So you can type in the place that you that that you extracted the genf stab. It should be the same. Dash mnt slash etc and then slash fs tab and this is the same thing I will, this is our stuff so you should check if they match up they should match up once they match up let's clear it out and then and then here we are changing root into a new system so we type in arch ch root Dash, I mean slash M and T. And now you should not get colored text anymore. You should get plain text like this. That means you are in your new system and not booting from the USB anymore. So let's set the time zone. 
So what we gotta do is, for example, is type in ln dash sf slash usr slash share slash zone info and on your region for example I would be doing Asia because I don't want to leak my location and then I would be doing Asia Dubai I guess and then I would link that up to etc slash local time So now, what we have to do is type H W clock dash dash S Y S G O H C. Now that synchronizes your thing. So your time is synchronized now. Well, your time zone is synchronized. Now, we have to specify the locale. But, this is what people get stuck with. So what you gotta do is type in locale dash 10. It should say this. Then nano type in nano slash etc slash local dot conf oh, sorry And then you and then type in the language for now I would be doing L A N G equals E N underscore U S U S with capitals the U T F dash Eight. Then what you gotta do is you gotta click Control O, Enter, and then what you wanna do is click Control X to exit. I'm gonna clear this, and then I'm a, and then I'm gonna go Nano, that's etc, that's locale dot con oh no 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 wrong wrong file i'm gonna go double check okay guys so what you have to do is type in nano slash etc slash locale dot gen and then you want to uncomment your key map so I would uncomment I would uncomment en.us Oh, you're just trying to find in the US. And then I will uncomment the one that says dot UTFA UTFA. Click Control O. Press Enter. And then 
press control X. Exit. Now I press control L and go back here. So, let's set the name of our computer. So what you want to type in is editor in all caps equals nano and then slash etc slash host name oh I might have messed up again so let's run locale.gen again okay oh no let's run the locale dash gen command again and the generation is complete I'm gonna go check the next part so now you want to type in nano etc host name and then just put a uh, username the like username of your computer the name of your computer just for jokes and demonstration purposes I'll be using no I shouldn't be using that I will be using hi yeah you click control O enter and then control X let's clear the screen one more time So we can uh, skip this and come to here. Let's set the root password by typing in pass wd. It should give you this. I would just be typing in 1234. For yours, please type in something secure. Same thing, one, two, three, four. And then, let's install our bootloader. No, let's make a user. I am going to, uh, I'm gonna pause, create a, find out how to create a user, and then continue. All right, guys. So I found out it is user add dash n dash g wheel dash s dash bin dash bash and then your username big credit big giant credit to denchi video and his video arch linux a comfy install guide i need i mean like a big credit to him so what you now gotta do is you gotta type in your username mine will be anthony since that's my name And then, type in the password. For my account. You type in your account, and I type in my account. So, for my password, I will do 1234. Although, don't make your user password the same as your root password. This is just for test purposes. Now, we can install a bootloader. Actually, guys, we're not ready yet. 
we have to give pseudo permissions to our to our user. So what we gotta do is in all capitals and it all equals nano by pseudo. Now that we're here, scroll all the way down to allow all members of group real to execute any commands. And then you want to uncomment this. I wouldn't recommend this option. Although if you want to, or just supposed to be customizable, then you can. Okay, guys, so this is the last time we might be using Nano. So what we're going to do is click Control o Enter. And then Control x Now clear it. Now clear it. Finally, we're ready to install the bootloader. As a last minute addition, we're going to enable Network Manager, which is super useful. So we're going to type in System. TTL enable capital N network no spaces capital M manager should create a bunch of siblings and then let's install the bootloader now now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do Grub dash install dev slash dev slash SDA. It should give you this. Installation finished, no error reported. And then we're going to continue on to the next step. So now we're going to do grub mkconfig dash o Slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg Let's hit enter. Don't don't worry about Grub OS Prober. OS Prober is just like if you want a dual boot, we won't be doing that. So now we're finally ready to reboot. So what you want to do is type in our reboot. Oh, what you want to do is type in U mount dash A. Are you now a oh, okay so it's just dash a and then what you want to do is finally type in reboot oh we want to type in exit then we want to type in reboot Now it's going to give us this, we can enter into Arch Linux, oh sorry, oh no, so,
There you go, fixed. Good as new. Type in a password, which would be 1234, for example. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So you want to give in a login. So just put in your username. And your password. And now you're in. This is your Arch Linux system. And if you want to add a desktop environment, you should see my next video. Goodbye.